hear me? Everyone? Yes. Yeah. All right, good. This is what I wanted. I wanted to read something to begin the meeting. I used it the other day, so it goes it goes like this. Why are you unhappy? Because 99.9% .9 of everything you think and of everything you do is for yourself, and there isn't one. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Not a bad description. So this message is sort of a follow-up to the message of non-duality, basically. So the message of non-duality, in a sense, used to be encapsulated in certain parables. And one of them was the old parable, parable of the lion and the sheep. Now, if you've, many people have heard it many, many times here. But the parable of the lion and the sheep is there was a young lion with her mother, with the mother, and the mother gets killed. The young lion is left alone, orphaned, runs into a herd of sheep, gets adopted by the herd of sheep, and lives like a sheep the rest of his day, so to speak. Feeling a little irritable, restless, discontent underneath it all, but he didn't realize everything. He met another sheep. They had some kids. They looked strange, but they rationalized that away. Mm -hmm. And he did the best he could as a as a sheep, and he actually went pretty far. I mean, he was a huge sheep, and no, he could kick all the other sheep's asses. <laughs> so he was in a lofty position, but still there was this this sort of vague discomfort going on. And then one day they were the herd was chewing cud, which he never really got into that much, but chewing cud. And then an old lion showed up and ran towards the sheep to get some to get one sheep to eat. And he sees this younger lion and he thinks it's joining the hunt, but it's actually running with the sheep. It's surprised to see that. It runs over to the young lion, tackles it. The young lion looks at the old lion, goes, it knows very clearly it's a lion. He goes, Please, Mr. Lion, don't eat me. I'm just a humble sheep. The old lion, seeing it as a lion, it's a little confused. So he grabs it by not its little curly cues, but by its mane. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, and he drags it over to this water hole. And it doesn't say anything. And he just puts both their heads over the water. And the young lion sees the resemblance. Yes. So it gets whacked. Doesn't matter if he thought it was a sheep for 20 years or 20 minutes, the whack is like instantaneous, basically. Whack, because it was never a sheep. So there's no undoing the sheephood or anything like that. There's no transcendence. There's no transformation. It's it's always been a lion. It just was believing it was a sheep. Yes? So the young lion gets whacked. He's now awake to the fact that he's a lion. And that's the end of the parable. This is how non-duality was somewhat presented. But what we've noticed in, in, in hearing non-duality and being engaged with that message is the more important thing is the warning of what's going to happen when the revelation of the lion uh, can't be with the old lion, can't li you know, live with its head over the waterhole. As soon as the lion moves away from the waterhole, the sheep programming regroups, and now it's now it has a story of the revelation of being lion as an experience a sheep had. Yeah. So to me, the more important message wasn't that you're a lion, but the more important message is you're not a sheep. Yeah. And so as I first went to non-duality satsangs, people would talk about you're a lion. All you are is consciousness and all this and all that. And some people, it triggered, like, when I heard some dude talk about uh, there is no person, it was really cool, man. It whacked me really quite well. Unknowingly, what claimed that there was no person was this personhood, yeah? So when I left with no warning, with no information, that thing's that thing just it's just the same thing that happened with me when i was in this place called delancey street with with addiction yeah i spent two years in that place 
and I was going to graduate. Now, they had no bridge of support. After you left Delancey Street, you were on your own. Yeah, I left Delancey Street. I didn't know I needed to go somewhere else, and I was easy pickings. Got taken over again, went on a 10-month run, and ended up washed up on the shores of AA, luckily. But I had I was an easy target because I was in a state of not knowing a lot of shit. Yeah. I thought I knew a lot of shit, but the, I was missing the basics of yeah. I was taking false evidence to be real that I was an, a living body that was conscious. And therefore I had difficulty seeing what was false or true. Yeah. Same thing with this. You get the whack. Something's happened, but something regroups <clears throat> because it didn't get the whack. It was turned off while you were enjoying the whack. And that yet it turns back on in time. <clears throat> and it just claims whatever happened. Yeah. Even if it was your own, its own absence. Excuse me. <clears throat> mm. I can't get too high at the talk. It's just going to go way. Yeah. Uh, so you have that thing and you get, you feel like you're awake now. And then there's evidence that something that you still call you is not awake. Yeah. So now everyone, oh, I had it like this awakening period and everything was cool, but the head regroups. Yeah. And does the same mechanical thing. And now you're, you're the sheep that was once awakened to the idea of being a, a lion. Yes, that's not it. I don't feel so. The more important thing to see, because you already are a lion. Yeah, I mean, you can chant. See, when I used to chant, "I'm not a body, I am free, I am just as God created me," something like that, in the Course of Miracles. Very shortly thereafter, I realized. The only thing that would chant, it's not a body, is a body. Yeah. A non-body isn't going to chant, I'm not a body. That's a fact. That's the reality. I'm not a body. When there's a reality that's not that enjoyable, you want to negate that reality, but you're negating something that's not real, which reinforces it. Yes? So when you're chanting, I'm not a body, I'm not a body, you're giving breath and life to the idea of being a body who is now not a body. So, <laughs> what are you going to do? This isn't, it's not personal. It's mechanical. The head claims whatever it is brought into contact with. And that movement of claiming has you out. You're asleep at that point. And then after the claiming, there's a sense of you are the one that was doing everything. And then when you start entertaining the idea of being a non-doer, you're entertaining it as a doer. Yeah? When there was never a doer to begin with. So these warnings need to be expressed because people are going to go through this every time. They're going to feel something. And then when the old shit shows back up, there's still a connection as it being you. And obviously, I, I, it, it was 98% pure awareness. Yeah. 94%. I've got to clean up six. You know, it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. This is dog shit awareness. There's no pure awareness or radical awareness. There's awareness. Yeah. So this, this in my little event, my little uh, trajectory was much more important than the fact that I'm a lion. I don't need to know that fact. I need to know the fact that I'm not a sheep. Yeah. That's all I need to know because I'm not a sheep. I don't need to keep chanting. I'm a lion because I'm a lion in this example. Yeah. You see it. It's a principle. It's not just a radical little idea that only works. Let's say one time every 20 years. It's a principle. Yeah. You don't have to chant you're, you're in what you're already in. Yeah. 
You don't need to get out of what you're not in, and you don't need to get into what you can't be out of. Yeah? Now, I know not, I do not need to get out of the sheep programming because I'm not in it. Yeah? Yeah? I haven't read a book about lion at all. It's sort of like when I did this, we did those talks in San Rafael at that bookstore. Some friends are here. I think they're friends. Yeah, they look like they're all right. <laughs> and uh, after the talk, they pay you at the desk and they had tons of books all around the place. Keep getting more and more spiritual books. And there was one I saw right on the top of a pile and it was consciousness. And it was like 1,200 pages on consciousness while we are consciousness. Don't you see the absurdity of consciousness reading about consciousness? Don't you see the absurdity lion reading about lions? It's better to read about a sheep and recognize you're not that. Yeah? Because you're not going to discover a revelation, a revelation you are what you're looking for. That's already done. The looking for has passed its prime. You are what you're looking for. Yeah? The looking for now has switched. You know, you ever watch, uh, you know, they have yin and yang and, you know, duality and stuff. And yin and yang is very interesting where if a yin goes super far, it turns into yang. And when the yang goes super far, it turns into yin. So this is exactly what happens in a way. Yeah. We're using what we are to look for what we are, which is really actually reinforcing what we're not. Yeah. So you're looking for what you are is actually reinforcing what you're not. What? Yeah. That's the assumption. That's the that's the message. Yeah. The message of non-duality is not two. But this is a follow-up message. Yeah. And we use the thing, the sheep and the lion and whatever and whatever, because as Ramana Maharshi said, something was written in one of uh people's book by his about his teachings. He said the greatest mystery being ourselves reality is wanting uh, to attain reality as reality. Yeah. Or what? Well, yeah. The greatest mystery is wanting to uh, re retain, to attain reality being ourselves reality. Yeah. This says it thousands of different ways. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Yeah. Would would it be appropriate to say that to anyone other than the Buddha? Yeah, but there we are, thousands of us: Jim, Bill, Sue, Molly, all thinking we're Jim, Bill, Sue, Molly. But the fact is, we are Buddha, and we're basically using the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Yeah, this is just the message of non-duality. I feel. So that it triggers not a movement to keep seeking, yeah, but to lose all interest in seeking, yeah, because the seeking is 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 what's making something else so, not what we're seeking, but the seeker. So the seeker gets fueled by the seeking much more than the finding, yeah. And this why now. If the whole agenda is to support the seeker, then a business such as that will say, oh, it will take lifetimes to uh, arrive there. Wow. you're Now you just bought an insurance policy. You're going to be a seeker for lifetimes? That's fucking insane. Yeah. So this message is simple. We're not saying it's a possibility. We're saying it's mechanical. The head is going to claim whatever's going on and it's going to just like it says in the course of miracle the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part yep so the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part so the brain taking in all the information everything 
interprets to the body of which it is a part. In this case, aligning it with this example, the body is the sheep, yeah? So the brain of the lion is taking all this information in and it's referring or inferring back to the idea of being a sheep, yeah? Now, because, because you're not doing it, it's going to keep going, yes? This isn't about seeing something as playing God and then trying to quit playing God. Hey, hey, come here. Just close the door, honey. It's just barking as they can see. Yeah? Yeah. Dogs, reaction. Just take the vision away from it. Close the door, doesn't see the thing to bark at. Yeah? Our vision sees more of the shit to bark at. Yeah? <laughs> it's crazy. So the simple message was this. It was interesting because I assumed a lot of shit when I heard this message, and most of the assumptions were off. And one of the assumptions was a lot of what I'm not I was still taking to be me. And it was it was very, the head, the mental logic couldn't get around the fact that it, it had an idea of what someone who was awake would look like. And I wasn't living up to that conceptual diagram because I got mad at someone an hour ago. I would, I would, I would like to see Raman Maharshi keep his composure calling Comcast for five or six hours. I'm sure fucking Ram Nohashi would get super pissed off. <laughs> yeah, because this, this, the time of bureaucracy is just something else. There's no solutions to be found, and you're just passed on to different people. It's like these messages of you're going to get it, and you go to how many people, 12 or 13 of them. It's like a long Comcast call. <laughs> yeah, you're blamed for everything. I, I I advise you go to another retreat, make it longer. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, yeah. It just goes on and on. So, do you humbly believe? At least you must feel it that awakeness is your nature, because I don't decide to see through these eyes. The ears seem to be on no matter what. The best I can do is put something in it to block it, but if I don't have anything blocking it, it's going to hear what's ever going on, pretty much. I mean, I'm defined by a program, the action figure, but I'm going to hear shit. I may rub against something I didn't want to rub against. I feel it. So this, and these are the demonstrations of consciousness in contact here. And it looks like the consciousness doesn't demonstrate any thought or effort to be conscious. I don't think I have to go to a seeing class in the morning before, my, you know, before the eyes open, I got to go to class. No, the eyes open, there it is. Yes. It's actually there before. Oh, somebody with a jacket. So this process of the head, I call it selfing. Yes. You can use whatever terminology you want. But there is a process, and all, obviously all processes of a time. So a process is of time. And this process of selfing, I think, is pretty damn fast. I mean, there's an action, and then you're presented as the actor very quickly. Very quickly. And I don't believe, from my own experiences, any process I do to get out of that first process works. Because, but what I did find out, that first process infects the other process is that come after. So the first process of the idea that I'm already a thing, a long-lasting, independent, separate thing, a self, that process gets injected in all these things I'm trying to do not to be a self. So basically, my wanting not to be a self is reinforcing the idea of self, because everything I do is being claimed as me as the doer. I do not believe a process can get before that process. And I do not believe in hierarchy of processes that process that come after 
have a great influence on processes that come before. But I do believe processes that are before can infect what comes after it. Yeah. I mean, the germ will be carried. And I've seen it in my own life. So this is the message with warnings. Yeah. And I feel the warnings are actually much more important because if you don't see it or be aware of it, you're looking from it. You're going to look from it. And there's going to be a lot of mechanical activities. You're just going to keep be living under the assumption that they're yours. <clears throat> and so when there's great evidence that everything is incredibly beautiful and clear, <laughs> And then you don't help that old lady across the street three hours later and you get disqualified from your exalted condition because just the, the act of being identified as the doer is still in place. <clears throat> I think the act of being identified as a doer is not something you're not doing. I don't see any of your fingerprints on it at all. I believe it's a mechanical reaction to conscious contact yeah and the system call it the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part and as the course of miracles says so emphatically this you should know the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part this you should know this you should know yes so here we are we're trying to put it out there so that you know now yeah <laughs> And maybe your dream of everything being super clear by that thing, which is programmed not to be clear, you'll realize that's a misunderstanding. Yeah. And there'll be a loss of interest in it. And now all these subtle requirements for you be, for you to be awake will be erased and you'll realize you are already awake. Yes. The head can seem to be awake. And the head can seem not to be awake, but you are awakeness. Not as a head, not as a thing, but you are awakeness. Now here, you can believe that or not. And for 70 years, your head can do a nice pantomime of what a life would look like if you weren't awake, but it can't last, yeah? <laughs> because inevitably, the timelessness, timelessness wins out. So... That didn't come from looking or further study. It came from loss of interest. The messages I heard combined with this view showed me an incredible futility of that stubborn drive to experience my own absence, but with me still there. That was all given up like a ghost. Yeah. And then the dominoes, well, just started going and things were revealed. And this subtle sense of volition and being the doer and the feeler is not going to stop. That's not the point. It's to see it's not you. And it's a great reminder because it's not going to stop. It's going to play its little tiny square in its little Zoom meeting. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's just... We're making something that's readily available to be based on requirements that we have to meet. That's not the case. Yeah. That's the head's case. There's always something it has to do to make something that's readily available at all times right now to become seemingly available to you as a special, unique, independent, separate, long-lasting entity. Yeah. You give up that. And then uh, you don't start from not awake. You start from awake. It's sort of like that old Zen parable that I think they forgot the first stanza. And it, it, uh, it's like that one in the monastery where that the monk, uh, new monk, the monk, uh, a new abbot shows up and 
calls the librarian up and says, I want you to do a new translation of all the scriptures. And the, and the monk says to him, well, we just did that about eight months ago. He says, I don't care. I want you to get down there and start translating the, the scriptures. So the monk's down there burning the candle and everything. Three in the morning, he sees something. He rushes up to the abbot's door, knocks on the door, and he says, the word was celebrate. <laughs> that one little missing look at what the fuck it turned into yeah so this is the thing if you don't see this you're going to be looking from it that's what it told me whatever's speaking that's what I was informed of and I haven't, I tried my best not to move from that for the last 20 something years, how long it's been. It just became obvious uh, that the lion doesn't need to know it's more about being a lion. It's being a lion completely, perfectly. Yeah. It's the idea of being the sheep is interesting. Yeah. And so let's negate that. Yeah. And this negation, it works beautifully because it doesn't need to affirm anything because you are the affirming quality already. You are being your, your self-reality. So this isn't negate and affirm. It's negate, yeah? And the affirming is us. Yeah. Yeah. So you get out of that dualistic spin. Yeah. So... This is how it worked with me. And that's why we share it. Yeah. I mean, we're an independent bakery. We have muffins every day. Not one of them's a day old. Gluten-free Gluten muffins, yeah. <laughs> but in the window, what's new for in non-duality? Nothing. So you don't need to read the ingredients. You're going to just get the same amount of nothing that you got the last talk. Yeah, so I'm a little under the weather, man. And as you know, when you're sitting in satsang, the the energetics can get high, and it pr presses presses against what's ever weak in your body. Yeah. So usually before I used to have people say, "Keep it low," <laughs> but yeah. So, all right, anyone, we'll just open it up. I'm so happy that you're here. And uh, I really want to get this across, why I feel because of this, the quickness of this process of selfing, I don't, I don't see you're going to... Uh, Looking as it, you're never going to, you're always looking from it. Yeah. It blocks that ability to see it before it started because you're already, you've already a, a couple seconds have, have elapsed before the, the gun of the race has been shot. Yeah. You, you missed something. So when you see this, uh, you see that, that looking from that. Yeah. You see the sheepness as a lion you don't dwell and wish to see the lion as the sheep you it turns it around and you see the sheep activity and then i think it could take a little a, a lot who knows but there's going to be a, a time where there's going to be enough shift of the interest and attention that uh a lot of the irritating qualities are going to be uh blunted so to speak and you'll travel lighter as the action figure in the time you have in this little trajectory what more do you want really yeah you already have everything else you're awake already yeah the liberation you're already liberated you're liberated from the need to be liberated that's what you're liberated from yeah. you're liberated from the need to transcend yeah you're freed from that that's it Oh, I no parades? No, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, this isn't 
Oh. Uh. To the head, this isn't good news, literally. It loves to sign up for shit to become something. But being it, being is no, it's not into that at all. It, it, if you would say uh, sign up for 80 years of heavy work to become something, it would sign up for it. But when, when there's just the recognizing of being what you're not, it's quite, not, it's quite uninterested in that. Yes. Yeah. It is. You've got to go through a thing because you're bummed out for a while. It's like a junkie getting off of drugs. You're bummed out. When I got off of cocaine use, I was bummed out. My ability to enjoy life had been completely, not completely, but it seemed completely, sucked out of me. Yeah. I didn't like to enjoy shit. Yeah. In this way, you've been always looking to get something. When you serve nothing, you're sort of like, what? Yeah. I went to India for this. Fuck. Yeah. But if you stick with it, it's like that desert tortoise and the coyote. The dead coyote tries to get that desert tortoise. The tortoise sucks its meat in. The coyote, blah, 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 for three minutes, tries to figure it out and then gives up. That's really the great joy of the coyote in this sense. Yeah, if we got something, it would just reinforce the something that got it. But we're getting nothing, and it doesn't reinforce the something that wants something. It doesn't reinforce it, yeah? Unless you make non-duality something, then it will reinforce it. But if you get the message that it's nothing, it does not reinforce that which is wanting to get something. It just doesn't. It starves it, really. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And you still wish you had a parade, really, every once in a while. You know, some rose petals when I came home on the floor. Yes. Those past loving gauges, gazes. No, you're just fucking what? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so, all right, we'll open up the meeting. Uh, Craig May. <clears throat> hey, Craig. Brian. Come on in. Um, I love, you know, when um, you say, if you don't see it, you're going to be looking from it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's such a, that's such a, I mean, that just says it there. And it's, like you said, it is so fucking quick. It is so lightning quick that we don't see it. No, really don't see it, and then we're looking from it. When we when we start to look for it, we're already that. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. This is that's why you're looking for it. Yeah, in a, it, and in a sense, it's what you're listening to. You're listening to that. Well, yeah. that, well, the ego. The, the course we call it the ego. You can see that. You recognize what's talking to you as you isn't you. You can watch the mind. You can watch it. And when you're watching it, you see what appears within it. A thought might appear. But you're watching the mind, so you don't go to the thought. So the thought's got no power source. It's got nothing to line it up, and it just dissolves because you you don't go there. You're watching it. Anyway, I want to share something with you as far as what, you know, if you're not listening to the ego, there's something else you can listen to. You call it spirit. Of course, we'll call it the Holy Spirit, whatever, that beautiful little subtle instinctive voice. The other day I was walking down, walking down the road here, Interact Road. It was a beautiful afternoon, just gorgeous sunshine. And I was walking under these big trees. Dead, there's dead leaves everywhere at the moment. The trees are dropping their leaves. And as I walked, as I was walking on, I looked down on the footpath and there was this little insect or creature. It was walking across the footpath. I watched it as I walked past it. And I looked down, I just smiled at it, smiled at the watching it make its way across the footpath. I went past it and something said, stop. 
I stopped and I went back and I was watching it walk across. It was one of those, um, I think it's called the Praying Mantis. It's got this, yes. um, like this torso and it's got these tiny, thin, long legs that come off the torso. And it, how it walks, it, like the leg, I think the legs are so um, thin and without strength that it, it propels its body back and forth, like its torso back and forth like this. And when it, on the forward momentum, it takes a step because it gets the momentum the forward, when the body is moving forward. I was watching it. I was just mesmerised with the thing. It was beautiful. But it was as it moves forward, it takes the step. Anyway, I was watching it. And something said, that little, that little voice said, pick it up and put it on the side of the sidewalk. I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. No, there's no need for me to mess with it. And I'm still watching it. And as I, I, I'm looking up the footpath, and I'm thinking I'll watch it until it's, a, until it's at a stage where if someone comes down the footpath, it's going to be on the other side before that person gets there. So I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and I'm watching up the footpath and I'm thinking, no, it's right now. If someone comes over the horizon, by the time they get down there, it'll be on the other side. So I thought it's right. I'm not going to mess with it. And again, there was that little that little voice in my head said, pick it up and put it on the side of the put it on the sidewalk. I thought, no, nah, it's fine. I well, I didn't look the other direction. I turned around and I walked. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a guy about three metres away on the, about um, walking towards me. I nearly put my arm out in front of him and said to stop him. I thought, I can't do that. What am I going to say? There's an insect on the footpath. <laughs> so he went past and I thought, shit. And um, I can remember I screwed my face up because I thought, oh, man, that he's, he's just going to squash it. So I turned around and I watched him, and as he's as he's as he stepped forward, he had these big motherfucking boots on. <laughs> as he stepped forward, he 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 um he caught the the praying mantis on the on he got the top of his boot. He kicked it. Ooh. He kicked it forward, and then he he stepped over it, and off he went. I thought, thank Christ. So I went up. I had a look at it, and I watched it. I watched it hit the hit the hit the car to tarmac. <laughs> it was on its back, and when it hit, its legs went sort of, and then it stopped. It just went still. So I went up to it. I'm looking at it. I think it's still intact. I think it's okay. So I pick him up. I take him over to the side the the sidewalk, and I put him down nice and gently. And I put him down. And I watch him. No movement, but he was intact. So I'm thinking he's probably just shot. He's probably just in shock. I think it's all good. I'll, nothing, much, nothing much I can do now, so I'll just let him go. I turned around and walked off, but I thought, fuck me. Fuck me. That little voice, that little voice in my head, that beautiful little instinctive voice that was saying, please pick it up and put it on the footpath, knew what it was fucking talking about. Unbelievable. That, don't you, you know, unbelievable. How did it? I didn't listen to that little, that subtle, beautiful little voice that was telling me to pick it up and put it on the sidewalk. I didn't listen, and it got fucking hammered. Unbelievable. That's how beautiful and wise that voice is. That's the one we don't listen to. The one we listen to is that fucking psychopath up here with the megaphone. That's what, to hear that little, that beautiful, subtle little voice, you have to stop stop listening to, listening to that other fucking maniac. And then it comes down, it gets quiet. It quietens down, and that little subtle voice that wants to speak to you, that knows what it's talking about, that loves you, that wants to guide you, is all knowing and all wise, that comes online and you hear it. You hear it. <laughs> That's what you listen to. Not that fucking psychopath up there is... You know, so yeah, I just wanted to share that because I thought it was a beautiful. I was going into Craig's closet. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> I thought I walked by it and it said no one's home. Yeah, I thought you were out. Oh, very nice. Thank you for that. I love Craig. Uh, 
It's really nice to see it. Really nice. Yes. Praying mantises, I really, I try to grow them, not grow them, but keep yeah, them, in, keep them in an aquarium. And I had uh, speakers in there that could pick up all their sounds. Wow. Yeah. yeah. They were cool. Very cool. They're alienish type. I like them. When we bought yeah. a house in uh, in Australia in in Lily Pilly, we were I was looking at it from the other side of this street that was, and a big uh, a big praying mantis walked towards the house and that sold me on the place because yeah. I've only <laughs> seen them in in very not that many times in my life, you know. Like it out there, and it was very cool. Yeah, yeah. We had a praying mantis in the garage. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but Craig's closet. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, it's co co oh corner. Craig's corner. We keep Craig in a closet, and then we have Craig's corner. All right. <laughs> forgot. Now I remember. All right. Thank you, Craig. You're welcome, man. Remember that second voice you heard, the head's going to claim to be that voice. Yeah. That Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, just make sure that you, it, it, when you think it's down, it's not out. Yeah, no. it's got two faces that you got to knock out. Yeah. It will claim everything, everything. It loves the spiritual, spiritual shit. It loves that. It, it oh, loves to claim the... It loves to claim the one. <laughs> it loves to claim to be the one who's um, who's uh, <laughs> who's neglecting the ego itself. The one it loves to. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's a two faced like that Batman bad guy. Yeah. Remember the Batman comics? Yeah, this guy Two Face. Yeah, so you see the one, and you you see the one, and. See, sometimes the message of claiming turns into a, hist a history lesson. And you're now going over the history lesson as the present tense lesson of claiming. Yeah. So yeah. you have, you see two, you see the one that used to be the one looking before, and you see the next one is now going to grab that voice and start yeah. sending you propagandists. Propagandists. Yeah, Two movements. You got to get the same. Exactly. So, yeah. But after that, I think it's pretty. Uh, because the loss of interest. Let's say the loss of interest. So interest was was on something, and then it's moving away from something. Yes. So the last ditch effort of that which it's moving away from jumps in and claims to be the one that's seeing the one that we're moving away from. So it can go it with you. Yeah. It yeah. leapfrogs. It's it sort of like he gets on the boat again. You have this whole, whole ceremony. You throw the guy off the boat, and then you're on your journey, and there he is again. <laughs> the thing is, every time you meet it, you call it me. That's the dilemma. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I felt. Uh, because I know some people who I like very, very much, they have done 80, 100% more stuff than I ever did concerning spirituality. And they saw one aspect, but they didn't see the, the seeing of that one aspect was also clean. Yeah. And it doesn't, seeing it as it, doesn't bring the fruit you would expect if you saw it as not it, yeah. And it has, it has, when you're when the interest is leaving it, it has its fail safe mechanism, which is, oh, <clears throat> I'm the one that's losing interest in that. Yes, yes. And then after that, I don't, I don't think you need to do much really. When you start seeing the two faces, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they're both mechanical, and it could go on ad infinitum in a finite event, like for 80 years, wherever you are, <clears throat> it's going to claim to be the one there, yeah, and just what it was talking as itself will be talked as the other, yeah.
And it's just so you recognize that you is never going to get out of that you. That's the getting out. Yeah. You realize you're not in both either yous. Yeah. That's the out. The out is not a condition that gets produced. The out is actually the absolute condition. It's this mental in it. This mental in <clears throat> has a has a mental out, yeah, which is just a bigger in. So, so you're thinking you're in the land of out, but you're still that's in, yeah. So, the in we're talking about. Uh, not being in has no out yeah you're not in that's that's it it's a it's like you're not in period it doesn't have another oh but but you gotta learn how to stay out no you're not in absolutely and so now all these little entrails that have been called you that are finite and happening triggered by programming and everything else there's a, a there's a breaking of an allegiance with that. Yeah. There's absolutely no you that's going to be there to get it. Yeah. So let the you that's here get other shit. Like pizza tonight. Yeah. So, all right. Anyone else? Floyd. Is my friend. Floyd. And then, uh... Hi, Paul. Yeah, this, uh, as you said, you know, the person is thrown out of the ship and then he comes back on the ship. So is that only an appearance or, you know, like... It's an uh... appearance, yes. It's an appearance. And... Uh, it never is actually... It like in the process of time, <laughs> is it a waiting? That, and... okay, with this appearance... In the process of time, is it a waiting that you just wait? Okay, I'm having a bad day. My head is uh, running its course and I'm selfing and, you know. So is it a matter well, of time? That would be that selfing, time? talking about the selfing. Mm. <laughs> yes. So the thing that's telling you you're having a bad day, when you're having yeah. a bad day, day, there's a knowing of having a bad day. Right. The thing that tells you you're having a bad day isn't that knowing. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling myself I'm sick. I know I'm sick physically now. I can feel yeah. it. I don't need yeah. to go over it. I'm sick. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for breaking <laughs> the news. I'm yeah, you know, I've been every moment of this. I've been here. I know what's going on. There's somewhat of a, of a powerlessness, which is the dilemma of the action figure. Yeah. Some viruses get a 10, uh, 10 days, you know, fucking, uh, yeah, they rent the house for 10 days. It's like an Airbnb. Yeah, you can't kick them out. And you've rented to be four. And so, you know, if, uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, the head that's telling you how you are when you're seemingly how you are is obviously not you. Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing to do about it, or there's nothing... Well, there's nothing to do about it, but there's probably going to be a lot to do, yeah, or there won't be. And then you'll have the ability to have wisdom around that. You won't try to do a lot when there's nothing to do, and you'll you'll do a lot when there's a lot to do, yeah? And hopefully you have the wisdom to know the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like my situation right now in the action figure, if if I don't get in, dwell into it, I'm just on vacation all day. So I respond accordingly. Yeah. And now that I've lost the phone and haven't been moved to buy another one, I don't seem to have anything I have to do. So I'm milking it for a little while and then I have to fucking surrender to the, the norms, but no one's calling me. It's fucking Nirvana. Yes. So, yeah. You'll find your own, you know, this is just an invitation. <coughs> <laughs> 
we try to explain that the inter it, the invitation is going to be intercepted by something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so that's really the invitation. So the invitation is you're already at the party, but this invitate. Yeah. So these are just like false flag invitations. So you can recognize what you're not because it's going to arise and try to claim mm -hmm. the in invitation and being ourselves reality turns into a path to become something yes so mm. i think this is the greatest way to be taught here is by seeing what you're not to tell you the truth and uh if it it worked with me i sat there and i listened and uh that thing that was was a futility became a hallelujah. You know, I'm never going to get it. It's hallelujah now. Yeah. Mm. Because that means I can't lose it. That's yeah. Right. And the ordinariness is not that it's ordinary. It's that it doesn't, it's like a huge field with no need for offense. It's like the gateless gate. Yeah. Or the open secret. It just, it just disarms you. <clears throat> day in and day out it just disarms you and uh i feel it it's a an understanding that brings a light a lot of light to the misunderstandings that tend to run us yeah and uh like the idea one of the big ones at the beginning was uh because you know there was a big fad at one point getting into the moment yeah a lot of books written about it, how to get into the moment, and then, you know, how to stay in the moment, how to really, really get into the moment. You know, there was a lot of, and obviously, it was like uh, wood for a fire, you know, the seeker. Wow. Yeah. So, but it was all based on an insane idea that you could be out of a moment. Yeah. And so this is the whole thing. This is what's happening. We don't, question the factualness of the condition we want to get out of. We believe we're in something that we're not in. And so when this these misunderstandings get brought into the light by an understanding called non-duality, <clears throat> it's not like they become not so. They were always not so. Yeah, and there's just a seeing of that. And at that time, I have not tried to get into a moment ever since. I'd like to get out of the moment when I'm ill. I would, but uh, that's, that's, there's no escape, really. This is it. I mean, you don't get gypped in this world, yeah? So I don't believe you cannot be here. I don't, yeah? Mm -hmm. I don't believe in a lot of things. And they came about from recognition with these glasses of understanding that I received in non-duality. It just allowed, it allowed, uh, there wasn't more seeing, there was seeing more. Yeah. Yeah. So if it was, you know, if it got, went by fitness, I'd be doing a fitness meeting or something. But of course my illness would disqualify me to teach fitness. See that because there would be a requirement this has no requirement. I'm not what I'm not the person that gives the talk. The talk comes through a person. So no matter what condition I'm in as a person, it doesn't inhibit the message coming through. Yeah, I've seen that over and over thousands of times. And in the early days, it was better when I was more fucked up. The talks were very, they were clearer when I was super unclear. What do you, you know, what is an interesting thing in that? <clears throat> when I was sent, you know, when I was sent around the corner for a half an hour, everything came in beautifully. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Of course, my head responded, hey, I've got to, i got to live up to this message. But it clearly showed me very quickly. Uh, no, just read Yankee blogs, go to thrift stores. Yeah, you're just perfect in your imperfection. Yes. You're suitable to be used. There you go. Yeah. So, all right.
Robert and Brian. All right, Robert and Brian. Do you speak for the B Bavana Society? <laughs> oh, uh, that's a monastery in West Virginia, and I share my Zoom account with them. Oh, wow. Yeah, we live in D.C. All right, what's up? Um, so, great talk, and thank you. And um, I think I heard you saying, don't do anything, because if you do anything, it's just the head doing it. No, I'm not also, saying that. Do whatever you do and realize you're not the doer of it. Okay, and then how how do you recommend realizing that you're not the doer of it? Well, hopefully by listening to the fact that you're not the doer, because you're not the doer. Yeah? I mean, how, how hard is, is it to not be something you've never been? Yeah? So you've never been the doer. So it's not like I've got to break this habit. <clears throat> it's a mental habit that you're the doer. It's not of you. Yeah. So just hear the message and see where it takes you. It's almost like dyeing cloth. Here's the vat. Here's the color. We're not saying what color it is because every cloth is going to probably express the same color differently. And we just keep putting the cloth in the dye and then it gets dyed. We'll see. Maybe turn into a tie dye act. You never know. Yeah. But I have great faith in the message. I do. So basically right now, the only thing we do as a group is hang out together and have satsang. Really, we're not, we haven't thrown in any exercises or anything else. And uh, and I, I have faith in uh, a little, yeah, I do. So yeah, that's what I would suggest. You're probably going to get confused and think all this and all that. <clears throat> Those are all good signs, yeah, because the mental logic is getting turned into a little pretzel about something, and this is what we want. We don't want the message to fit into the mail slot of the mental logic. We want it to be too big for that fucking mail slot. Yeah. So you get frustrated and shit like that because that which you've been calling you for so long, if you stop feeding it, you're going to see its activities as not you. It's going to be desiring and greet, claiming and trying to understand and know, and it's not you. How are you going to find out if you keep feeding it as you? How are you going to find out it's not you? You're going to try to find out is not you as not you. It doesn't work. So the seeker is the sought. S-O-U-G-H-T. <laughs> seeker and the sought. Time and space. <laughs> Remember, seeker and the sought, there could be thousands of things sought and a whole lot of seeking but there's only one idea of the seeker. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to have to stop soon. I think I'm running over. Uh, yeah, my body is. Uh, yeah. But you got it, right? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Man. Come back if you like and uh, sit with us and we'll just see what happens. See if it works for you. We'll definitely be back. Great. Thank you. Hey, I'm going to start. Hey, Mike G, I'm going to. Can you pass tonight? I can't. Uh, it's, it, the body isn't going to cooperate anymore. All right. Yeah. Just get back with me. <clears throat> Day or two. Miss Amelia, always a pleasure. <laughs> William Stamps, great. Mike G, thank you. Craig May. Andy S, Bill Churchman, Shannon, Cockery. <coughs> Something's in there. So I think maybe we'll see the exiting of a demon for the first time on a live Zoom. <laughs> it's going to come out of the right ear. Watch. Be watch. It's Oh, you missed it already. All right.
invisible. Oh, huh, shit. So, uh, David, down under, great. Morrow, California. California is gorgeous today, eh? Northern Cal. Er Eric Platt and Vista. James Olson. Kathleen Smitty. Cindy H. Miak. Take yourself good. I'm happy to see you, honey. <clears throat> Mika. Everett. Kevin A. There she is. Hari, what's going on? You're in the tundra? You you elope with an Eskimo. All right. Saraswati. Mike M, Anon, Sindhu, Stephanie, Aki Hero. I think you're new there. Phone numbers. Uh, hey, listen, thank you for the lovely meeting. <clears throat> I'll see you soon, eh? Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Thank feel you, Paul. better. Feel better, buddy. Feel better soon. Thank you, thank you dude. See you Saturday. Yes. Thank you.